Frank's Red Hot is the perfect blend of flavor and heat. So you can use an entire bottle to make recipes like buffalo chicken dip or buffalo nachos. Or even things that don't start with buffalo. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. Hey, Craig. personal podcast with you tonight with my best I mean, bud jeff let's get really personal up in think just watch folks we're gonna get really personal up in here yeah. for the next hour I mean, and a half to two hours i mean personally i'm doing pretty great so you know personally i am also doing well you know because personally i'm really excited here we are at podcast versus everyone episode 181 with me, as always, is a, a very close personal friend, Jeff Newser. <laughs> yep, that's me. And we are just beaming. <laughs> I didn't know how. I didn't know how many how many times you'd be able to work that in. I Look, was like, we're oh, we'll see. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll use the word personal a lot. Oh, that, that's that, that was be a impressive. record. Well, personally, I'm trying to talk here. Um, personally, I'm still beaming from just. What felt yeah. like personally to me was a very personal win, given uh, you know the, the the players on the other team specifically won, and how the game unfolded against the Arizona Wildcats yep. um, could not be personally for me more satisfying <laughs> in in yeah. how it unfolded. Um, have your yards, Jaden. Have all your garbage time yards. Um, yep. How many did he have? Like 370. Like most of them just came in garbage time. Um, and and But what he really did, he threw the same amount of touchdown passes uh, to his teammates as he did to his former teammates. Um, so that was a, that was a fun thing. Um, that was just one of four completions he made to the team that he used to make completions to. Um, so... All in all, given um, how he wanted us, told us to just watch. Um, thank you, Jaden. I appreciate that. Um, I was able to just watch live um, because of uh, how my daughter's birthday worked out. So I was really excited that I got to just watch uh, that at a, that 11 a.m. start um, and, and just watch the Cougs once again build a massive lead. Um, and, and just a, another dominating defensive performance, um, just all around great stuff. Uh, Jeff, um, how are you feeling personally? How are you feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I'm doing great. Um, that was, yeah, that was fun as hell to watch. Um, you know, it was, it was really interesting. I, we, we sort of talked about this earlier this week and or maybe it was today, maybe it was yesterday. I don't remember. But anyway, we talked about the defense a little um, just, you know, sort of in, in our chat, you and me and, and our other writer, Zane Murphy. And, it, you know, the, the defense, I, I have just sort of continually sold the defense just a little bit short. Um, and not because I haven't thought the defense is really good or anything like that, but I've just like, like every time we play someone who's got a good offense, I just think like, oh man, here, you know, here it comes. You know, this is the one, this is the one that we can't stop. It's, you know, we, we, we've slowed down just about everybody, but, but, you know, I mean this, and I just keep talking myself into these other, these offenses, being able to, to do something. And then our defense just, just keeps doing what they do, you know? And I, and I look at those, you know, those picks by Delora and 
you know, I know we're, we're having a lot of fun with it as well. We should, right? Like we, we kind of talked about this last week where it was like, you know, that I think most of our fans were very reasonably measured when he left. And and I think everybody just kind of went really just kind of took the, the Jake Dicker uh, tack this week, which was, you know, sometimes change is good for everybody, right? Which was what Dicker said. And I think most of our fans kind of went down that same road for the most part, you know, we were like, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you know, Delora had his issues and Ward's coming up here and, you know, we got a new offensive coordinator and, you know, so it all, it, it all makes sense. This is fine. You know, we don't, we're, we're not mad that he's leaving, uh, you know, whatever. And even if when he was playing well at Arizona, it was like, you know, it's not like we just went, there was definitely a segment of our fan base. It was like, Oh man, I can't believe we picked this guy over that guy. But, but like, it wasn't even like a, like a, it wasn't a bitterness thing. Right. Like nobody was bitter. Nobody was, you know, super upset. Nobody, nobody made it personal. Right. And then Delora has to say something colossally stupid, like, oh, it just watch. It's personal. And you're like, what, what? Like, how is it personal? You left, you know, you left. And it was one of those, you know, like you're having a great season at Arizona. I, I don't know, man. It just. Like we talked about it, it's just sort of smacked of immaturity. Just coming and... off like, like the biggest win in his career. Yeah, and, yeah. And and uh, and we're honestly, we were at the Goog and we were like having fun watching him play and ball out. Sure. And and, and yeah. there was a few people that were like, oh, "Fuck him!" And, and but you know, a lot of the people were like, "Oh, this is you know, it's fun to watch him, you know, do his shit, you know, yeah. do, do you know, the, play his kind of unique style." And, yeah, well, it was like, yeah, hey, he remember just, when he did that for us? Remember when he did that yeah. in the Apple Cup? Like, it's, you know, it was more nostalgic than anything else. We didn't, we didn't wish the kid ill. Yeah, and then he comes out and he, and he, he's just like, okay, apparently you hate Wazoo, and, uh, so it was like, yeah, if you're gonna talk like that, I want them to beat yeah. your ass, and yeah. that's what they did. <laughs> and we're gonna have some fun with it too. Yeah, absolutely. Like there were some, I saw some tweets where people were like. Man, cut the kid some slack. He won us an apple cup, which he did, and and we love him for that. And also, you know, uh, you know, we were we were hoping and reveling in the fact that he was getting wrecked on on Saturday. You know, it's like, I mean, I, I don't know what else you want. Like the the guy said, I mean, okay, the one thing we know about Wazoo fans is you just you don't mess with our school, right? You don't like, you know, little brother us. You don't be like. You, basically you just don't do what he did which is like you know if you love us we'll love you and and even when you move on we'll wish you luck but if you're gonna be like it's personal you know uh, for what for fucking what because your idiot coach went and got himself fired and like your idiot quarterbacks coach went and got himself fired like like it's personal he just again looks like a child and so of course we're gonna have some fun with it people are like you guys should be more mature than that you should no no it's sports. That was mostly you know Arizona. What? It's a lot sports. of Arizona, Arizona fans just like, what? Why can't they just? Why can't they just think about their role players? It's like he's the one that did that. Like we he's the one gonna, who brought it up. We were gonna <laughs> revel in that the same way. Like there yeah. was no way we were he could have just said, "Ah, oh, it's just another game." I have a lot of good memories from there. I've got, but like the whole like, and I don't know how many people actually watched the quote. Like that's the other piece. Like if you watch it. It's it's not just the words. It's like the tone. The tone is like, yeah, I've got the look on his face. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's looking straight at the camera. Like you just watch. I've I've got a score to settle, and you're like, for what? You know, for what? So yeah, come on, come settle the score. Let's see what happens, and you know that's what happened. I I will say, like, what was interesting to me was that the, you know, of course we're having fun with all the picks and everything, but like he. I want to say I don't think he was in, in a lot of ways he wasn't that bad. Like the interceptions were like, it's not like he was trying to play hero ball and like for like really making some very ill advised throws. There were just like these miscommunications where like he expected a receiver to be in one spot and he's thrown to another and you know a couple times like the the pick six was like you know nobody was there right into the bread basket. Um, you know, and I think that's a credit to our defense, which, you know, to kind of bring us full circle, like, man, our defense was super awesome. Yeah. they. I mean, they 
they were sitting in spots like that. Uh, it's obviously some tape, you know, and, and yep. to, to be able to figure out that, yeah, he's going to throw, if you give him this look, he's going to throw that, that route. And, yep. and that's what he did. And cause I think except for the last one, the first three were all like there, there was not a receiver anywhere near the ball. Like, and, and so it was maybe some sort of option route type thing. I don't know what type of offense Arizona runs, but maybe some option route like every time and, and, uh, and maybe like a hot read. And, and I know he obviously thought his defender was going to throw a post on his third pick. Um, he thought his, or he thought his receiver, thought his receiver was going to throw an out on the pick six. Uh, the locket one was a little deeper down the field, but it was seriously, yes. there was no, that one, one that one wasn't a great, yeah, that one wasn't a yeah. great decision. That, that's him. And, he definitely made some – like, there was a fourth down that he just – he obviously was a little amped up and yeah. like, airmailed a ball. Like, well, I don't and think, he's not the most – he's not the most accurate yeah, thrower. Yeah, he either. never was. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, did, that's not misses. his – that's not his strength. That's not the part where you go, yeah, he's, you know, pinpoint accuracy. Like, that's that's not but his game. A great thing the defense did, aside from the turnovers, was really not let him – not keep him inside – the pocket and even when when he escaped the pocket he wasn't dangerous yeah you know it, it, it was it, it they just did such a good job of bottling up his his ability he's we we know he's a great thrower on the run we know he's great under pressure but he wasn't yep. good under pressure in this game it's because they were hounding him yep you know they sacked and he him did he from, did not find spaces to yep. make extra plays happen buy extra time allow his receivers to break loose like the the scheme that we had to keep him in the pocket was spectacular. We we only sacked him twice. Should have been three if they would have reviewed the one play, which yeah was incomprehensible. You know, like he was very clearly down when he very threw the down. ball, and then they just didn't they didn't do anything. We, and we talk Arizona about the even on. called a timeout, and then they still didn't review it. Um, we can talk about the refs funny. on both sides of this game. Oh god, yeah, it was it was ugly. for both teams. Um, it was bad, but. Only two sacks for minus 22. He had four other carries for, let's see, 12 yards. So that was it. And and I think uh, 11 of them came on the one touchdown run. That was it. Yeah. So you had one run for 11 yards and a touchdown. You had three runs for one yard. And then you had two sacks for a loss of 22. That's pretty damn good. And, and a pretty significant you know, total of his, his yards overall. Came in the fourth quarter, thirty-one to six. WC's playing real soft coverage. They stopped pressuring him. Stopped yep. that that it, and and that was really like when he piled up yards. He also had another interception, but but yeah, that was they, that was really when they piled up yards. But really, the game's over at that point, and we've seen this is kind of how WSU manages big leads. They they kind of go into a shell in offense a bit, and they. Uh, in the fourth quarter, they're happy to give up five, ten yards uh, to to make a team move down the field. Now, sometimes that happens a little faster than you would like. Um, yeah. You kind of would hope they would just continue up the pressure. And, um, but you know, uh, wins a win. I you know I guess it and it never looks as pretty at the end. But you know they they've had these leads. The Cal one was the exception. They scored they scored two touchdowns in the fourth to pull away. But then you had the, the Colorado State game that hugely they kind of let that you know looked a lot worse in the second half. They they, they had the uh, huge lead against um, uh, Stanford. They didn't really extend it that much in the second half. They didn't really put up many points in the second half. They had a huge lead uh, against Arizona State. They did absolutely nothing in the second half, and then against Arizona, uh, really the offense didn't do anything in the second half. I think they had a field goal. Uh, or was it twenty four to six at halftime, or twenty twenty one to six at halftime? They got a field goal yeah. early in the third, and then really didn't do anything after that. So the offense, um, so the offense has looked really good in the first halves of games, like in, yep. in the last few games. It, they, they've 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 scored on opening drives. I don't think they did against Arizona State, but they scored three of their first four or three of their first five. They scored touchdowns on or something like that. Yeah. Um, Stanford three straight touchdown drives. Arizona 
really they they would have I think they would have had three straight of this kind of an unfortunate fumble like and when they were deep in territory they they were they were they were kind of they were moving the ball at will in the first half and 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 then in the second half it just seems if you look at the opening drive against Arizona they're making downfield they have they have routes running downfield you know typical air raid passing down routes but then in the second half they go back to the and then even once they had built a big lead you know they go back to these um you know heavily screen game running on first and second down type stuff yep and yep. it really uh it really makes the offensive numbers look pretty bad at the end it, they they've really like their offensive numbers in the last two second halves have been atrocious cuz yep. i remember against Arizona State they had 210 yards in the first quarter and i think they ended up with like 350 total or something and it wasn't yeah. you know Cal, cams numbers I haven't looked good, you know. Even the even the running numbers weren't weren't spectacular in this game, but it's you know it's I guess this is what they do, and, and yeah, I don't think it'll work against every team, but they've played some bad teams the last three times, and they they obviously have big faith in their defense, and yeah, and and that they they have the faith that they will protect these twenty five twenty eight point leads, and you know they have, uh, you know they've still yeah, won all I mean, those games by double digits. They've won. <laughs> <laughs> like it isn't that ultimately what it comes down to like i i, I, I sure want to defense would appreciate them a little bit sure i you know i'm sure they would but it's like i you know i want to wring my hands about it because i want because i'm greedy right like we joke all the time about drop 70 right like that, that's the whole you know drop 70 this is the weekend we're gonna drop 70 and this offense is obviously never gonna drop 70 but at the same time very just, happy when they drop over 20 when they drop maybe 35 half of 70 <laughs> something like that um but it's it's it it sort of speaks to the mindset of a fan right a fan's like yeah give me more like i want to i want to run it up i want to step on someone's throat you know i mean like think about the games that we had the most fun with arizona being like the prime example of that a couple of times right dropping 69 on them a couple of times nice. like the one in 2018 that was yep very nice the one in 2018 was like insane, right? I mean, what it was 40, 49 7, I think, 55, in the first half. 55 to 14. At halftime? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember that. I thought it was 49. Maybe, but anyway. Maybe it was 48. I don't know. I don't know. What, whatever it was. It's like, yes. You know, you just like, you're like, yeah, keep going. Keep. And then, of course, you end up with this huge number and it feels really great, right? But that's the like 55 kind of, to 14 at halftime. Okay. So that kind of stuff only matters, like, if you're in college football playoff contention, you know, those style points matter, and, and back then we thought it mattered, and then the next week we didn't move in the rankings after dropping 69. But it was like, other than that, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, all that really matters is winning, and as sort of, like, painful as it is to watch, you know, them bleed the clock out and, and you know, sort of what seems like limp to the finish line, you know, there's something to be said as, as like as much as it pains me to say this. I mean, there's something to be said for being, you know, extremely pragmatic. I mean, if you've got a four touchdown lead or a four and a half touchdown lead, it's like, yeah, if you minimize possessions and don't make any really, really stupid errors, you're probably going to win. And we watched, we have watched stupid errors and short possessions, you know, sabotage uh, games before, right? Like we've seen this where it's like, oh yeah, if we just, you know, and then we don't take up any time and we don't, you know, limit and we let the other team score really quickly. And, you know, it's, there comes a point where it's just sort of, it's, it's just sort of math, right? Like, you know, there's only so much time, there's only so many possessions and, you know, doing what they do with their defense makes it, you know, pretty pragmatic to handle games the way they do. It's not fun to watch, um, you know, unless you, you know, really, really love defense. But, um, you know, the offense is painful, but also, you know, job done. And it would be one thing if they were, okay, so they have a great first half and then they have a bad second half and then all of a sudden the offense is in a funk, you know, the next game. But that hasn't happened, right? I mean, like three games in a row, they've come out strong and then tailed off. And, and I think that sort of speaks to, um, 
you know, it sort of speaks to the idea that this is something about play calling more than yeah, really anything else, ability or talent or whatever. I think, I think it really just speaks to, we got a big lead. Let's make sure we don't make any colossal mistakes and we're probably going to win, you know, especially with our defense. And it, as it turns out, that is true. So, you know, maybe they get in a tight game, but you know, the last, you know, sort of tight game they were in was, um, you know, that Cal game, like you mentioned, and, and they were able to pull away in the end in that one. So I, I'm not particularly concerned that the second half issues are like some sort of, I mean, we're 11 games into this thing, right? There's one game left. I, I think we kind of know what they are at this point. Exactly. And, um, but yeah, so, you know, overall in the Arizona game, I mean, very, very satisfying win and, to get you know clinch a, a a winning record to get seven wins again, honestly, I, there, if seven wins heading to the Apple Cup is pretty impressive given the schedule. Now, you know of the of all the the difficult games that we knew they had in this, they got one of them, which I mean, they got one and they were very close on the on two others, and and that's kind of you were kind of hoping like can, can we. Like you were thinking, if we don't get any of these, we don't get, you know, at Wisconsin, and then the four, the big one, you know, and then you could be at Oregon State now, at Oregon State, and then at USC, Oregon at home. Um, if we don't get any of those, uh, can we could still potentially get to six wins, and if we win all the others, and we've won all the others, plus one that one at Wisconsin. So here we are at seven wins heading to the Apple cup. Now the Apple cup's probably a lot more, a lot. Now WSU is a better team than I think either of us thought they would be at the start of the season. Yeah, for sure. Especially, for sure. Especially given, I think the offense is almost pretty much what we feared (laughs) in some ways. Yes. But But, the defense is so much. The defense is, you know, just has taken such a step forward from last year and it is so it's a legitimately good defense and you know what legitimately one of the best defenses in the Pac-12 um truly probably one of the top 20 defenses in the country and um I mean to be sitting at you know we're not like big points per game guys but to be sitting at under 20 points per game allowed like heading into the final game of the season is pretty impressive and with I an offense that is that, that not is great not that is not keeping the ball away from the other team. Like, yeah. So they, that's just that makes it all the more impressive. And, and give it, you know, and the defense themselves has scored at least two touchdowns this year, I think, I think two. Um, and so uh, maybe there was another one. Um, uh, but yeah, it's no, three, three, three. Um, and so it's, uh, it, it's just impressive to be here. And UW is a lot better than, you again you or i thought they would be um uh, especially offensively uh they're they're probably the best uh, offense that wsu will have seen this year um i let's just just, did not see that coming let's get into it we're previewing the apple cup now folks um but (laughs) before we get into that we gotta we gotta talk about this this game time you know it it was it, it we have we have pined and pined and pined for a Saturday Apple Cup in Pullman, and then they go and pick like the one time that actually makes it hard for harder for a lot of people to go. Um, after yep. we're like, oh, it's so hard to get to you know Black Friday Apple Cups in Pullman. Well, now it's like people in Spokane are like, do I want to drive at you know midnight home from Pullman? back to Spokane in like bad, you know, potentially bad weather. Um, And, you know, even, so even if you're, you know, our kind of closest uh, population center, uh, it makes it difficult, uh, you know, and then if people were kind of waiting to see, hoping they could do it out and backs and stuff, um, hoping for that midday Apple cup, because obviously it's just very difficult to get lodging in Pullman. I think I saw a $500 a night, uh, room in Moscow if you if you want that um but so it's just hard to get lodging in Pullman so like even people you know so it's just difficult um 
to have that 7:30 start. Um, I get it, you know that they they're doing those that six day window. Uh, it, it, you know, if, if if Oregon lost and Oregon State lost, then probably WSU UW gets that uh, 1 p.m. on on a ESPN or ABC, whatever it is on. Um, but but no, we we we're the second second tier one here, and we get this. So we but didn't. It was very clearly Utah and Colorado were going to be that Pac-12 network game. Like that that was obvious because of Colorado. Uh, but but WSU still ESPN still wanted the WSU Dub game for their inventory, but they put us at seven thirty, um, which changes definitely changes the weather. Um, yeah. That you know it's going to be five to ten degrees cooler throughout the game. There is a a potential you know right now there's snow forecast after midnight, but we are not that far from midnight. Uh, when you get to the second half of this game, um, yep. it could easily move a couple hours and, and, and move in a little bit sooner. Um, and you're going to have, you know, close freezing or close to sub freezing temperatures throughout much of the game. Um, so it's going to be cold. Uh, if any, there's not supposed to be too much wind, but any bit of wind at that temperature, you feel it. So it's not going to be the the greatest feeling for you know without the sun even like to, in the stands it's going to be cold you know people are going to be sitting outside and tailgating for hours before they go in uh, that you know that's what I'm thinking is you know like when do I want to start tailgating sitting outside how long do you know last week we sat outside in that 35 degrees for you know maybe a couple hours like before and after yeah. the game but this is this is like a whole different ball game at 7:30 yeah. it's like if I start tailgating at two, that's still five hours in the, in, in, you know, in the, in, in the, I think, in the I think someone's going to be hanging out at the Coug is what I think. Oh, no, no. We got one more tailgating for the week. We'll be, there'll oh, be plenty God. of time at the Coug Ugh. this weekend. I, um, I I mean, I know, but like, my God, I, I was just looking at the Apple weather and it said the, uh, the feels like temperature at kickoff is going to be 29 forecasted at the moment. Which is cold as hell. <laughs> cold as hell. Yeah. I don't know. I guess if you have enough alcohol, then uh, maybe you won't. Maybe you won't if notice quite as much. But if you're if you're in a box, yeah, which is nice. Yeah, I. You know, when I think about the weather, the, the biggest thing I think of is like you know, I think of like a lot of fans is who does who does it benefit, right? And and maybe, I mean, maybe it doesn't benefit anybody, but also like you know, it's it's hard not to think about the 2018 Apple Cup, right? Which was um, you know, had tons of that wet, heavy snow that showed up and completely changed, you know, the complaint. I mean, I will go to my dying, dying deathbed thinking that if it doesn't snow in that game, that the result is maybe, maybe we don't win, but it's, it's a very, 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 you know, different game because it, you know, just completely neutralized, um, what we, what we tried to do in the passing game, you know, because as we've talked about, you know, the air rate is as horizontal as it is vertical. Um, and so when I think about this one, I'm like, okay, well, the roles are reversed now, right? Like Washington's the one with the, you know, the crazy passing attack. They've got the number one passing offense in the country, um, 366 yards a game or something. Um, you know, really, really good. Uh, Penix is is excellent. And and we're the ones with the, with the strong defense, right? Like Washington's defense is, you know, maybe so-so at best. Um, I don't know. Like there's, there's a part of me that's like, number one, like, I think, as I said, I've, I've undersold our defense all year. And so I think maybe I should, you know, put some respect on their name and kind of think about what Washington's going to have to do to adjust to them. And then beyond that, like, you know, I kind of think that, um, cold weather, any kind of breeze, uh, and any kind of snow, um, you know, is, is, I don't know that it's to our offensive offenses benefit, but I don't know that our offense is going to be great either way. Um, but anything that helps the defense, you know, slow down Washington even more, I think, I think is a net benefit to us. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, and there could be no precipitation, um, but I do think cold uh, definitely impacts. uh, Even if it's just cold. Yeah. Even if it's just Uh, cold. You you know, now um, it's, you talked about, you know, arm strength, you know, we've talked about arm strength and stuff like that. You know that Cam has a nice arm, but here's the thing: like we, the WSU's offense 
doesn't rely on downfield passing all that much. Um, so, which is typically what is most impacted in weather. Uh, now, we saw in 2018, UW was able to complete some big passes down the field, and they, but they were really able to lean on their running attack um, to move the ball. Uh, right. Now, they are very heavily reliant on the pass. You know, they're not a bad uh, running team either, but, you know, uh, they're just an all-around good offense. Um, but they definitely, I mean, like you said, uh, Penix is – leading the nation in passing and he's almost 400 yards a game uh it, it, they have a crazy you know they have the type of passing numbers that like the best leech offenses had like you know and, and so it's it's crazy to it, it, it's it's just wild to think how how that's changed so um do i think the weather will have that much of an impact not not really uh i think it'll probably hold off the precipitation will probably hold off it'll be cold uh, which no one likes, but I, I, I think that um, I, I think that if if there is precipitation, that that does have an impact, especially on downfield passing. Uh, but I, I honestly, it's just it, it's just I, I I think that WSU just has like I, I just it's just this kind of fun this like test that WSU has of their defense. It's like they, they've kind of ramped up. They, they played one of the better offenses last weekend against yeah. Jane Delora in Arizona. And now it's just like a, a little bit better version of that. Like Arizona, no, yeah. make no mistake. Like Arizona's offense was really fucking good. And yeah. WSU's defense made them look not good. And it wasn't and, just the turnovers. Like yeah. it, it just in general was not good. Singer and Cowing didn't really get loose too much until you know, really when the game was out of hand, uh, you know, like I said, I think our defense is just, re- just really fucking good. Um, and the craziest thing is that they're not, you know, we were talking about this this morning. I was like, I, when I think about our defense, I don't think of it. I, I guess I just don't think of it as a dominating defense. And, but that's, that doesn't jive with, you know, say being the number one scoring defense in the pack 12, like, like their results have been incredible and I'm just kind of like, yeah, I mean, they're good, but you know, and, and there really shouldn't be any, but, and, and when I think about why, why that is, I think about things like, you know, they're real high up in scoring defense. Um, but you know, their yardage, their yards allowed is, is, is a little bit less, you know, uh, like not quite as highly ranked, right. Their yards per play, I think was fourth in the conference in actual PAC 12 game. Um, and then you look at things like sacks. Okay. So they've, they've got a fair number of sacks, but it's like, you know, like fourth or fifth in the conference, maybe six, something like that in uh pack 12 games. You look at interceptions like they are, I mean, up until this game, they had only had three interceptions in conference games. Like yeah. the way that they do it is not in the ways that you typically think of like super, um, you know, dominant defenses, right? Like there's not like massive amounts of big negative plays there's not like constant pressure on the quarterback there's not like all these interceptions like when we think back to 2017 it was it was you know herc like you know just blowing shit up all over the place right i mean that defense was just disruptive right like they'd give up chunks but then they'd hit you with like this huge negative play you were just waiting for the huge negative play this defense doesn't generally get those but they also don't generally give up you know, huge plays. I think um, they've got like, I was looking also at their uh, 10 plus yard plays allowed. And they're, I think, second and second lowest in the conference in 10 plus yard uh, plays allowed. So they're just really sound. They don't do it in the way that kind of makes your brain go, yeah, this is dominant. But but in the end, they are dominating. Um, and, and I think Washington's going to have a real, real hard time with them. And, and I'm you know, I'm, I think I'm finally relenting and being like, yeah, like Washington's going to have their hands full with our defense, you know, rather than the other way around. Now, um, but just to just to add some anxiety to it, because this is out cup week. Well, of course. Uh, UW's only given up seven sacks all year. Yep. So that's it. And, the one defense, the one offense that's really had a good day against this defense all season 
was Oregon, and they could not bring Bo Nix down. And yep. so that's that's going to be an issue. Um, and then it, it comes down, and then tackles for loss. They've only given up 31, which is not too terrible. If you look at WSU, I think they're in the 70s or something in, in how many tackles for loss they've had this season. They, they, they definitely – use that to their advantage, uh, TFLs. Yeah, they have 74. WSU itself has given up 78. So they're giving up a lot more um, loss plays on offense. Now, if you look at UW's defense, this is uh, definitely not on par with some of the defenses that have slowed, really made this offense look bad. Oregon State, Utah, USC. Like, so that, you know, in, in Wisconsin even. Uh, but it, it's... it's uh, it, so, there. This is a def- defense that, you know, I think that WSU can get to twenty-seven, thirty points, a, a, you know, against. Um, especially given if they, you know, that they're able to uh, be efficient in the red zone as they've been, and I think that's honestly where where this game is going to come down to, is efficiency and scoring chances when you're inside the forty, when you're inside the twenty. Because uh, I think UW's probably going to move the ball into into it, into our territory. Like I think it's going to happen. It's going to happen probably, you know, with some frequency. They're too good of an offense not to do that. But when the windows get tighter, uh, WSU's defense has done really well. Like you talked yep. about, they give up a lot of yards, but those points, if they can, that's going to be huge. And WSU's been good in scoring opportunities recently in their offense. If they could be that opportunistic team again, they can pull the upset here. And and let's be honest, it's not that big of an upset. No. Uh, you know, the line is too, um, you know, if you look at Brian Fremo's efficiency index, uh, Washington is 26, WSU's 29. He doesn't have the... Uh, Bill Connolly has it predicted Washington 26, Washington State 25. So yeah. it's just it, 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 this, you know, by, you know, now we've come into some of these games before and the new dubs blown the our fucking doors off. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that was, we just, we, sometimes we just got to think like this isn't Mike Leach is not coaching this team and Chris Peters is no. not coaching the other team. Nope. Nope. And, even a little more data for you here. So I've been, I've been relying pretty heavily lately on the prediction tracker, which again, aggregates like, I don't know how many it is, but something like 30, 30 or 35 different prediction models. Um, and so the line right now, I think is uh, UW by two and a half. And the, when they predict, when they, when they do all these aggregate predictions, the average, the average prediction, the average point spread is, WSU by 0.05. Yeah, it's average. And then the median is UW by 0.67. The standard deviation, the number doesn't really matter, but it's low. The minimum uh, prediction, the one on, on one side, the prediction is UW by 4.5. The other end maximum prediction is WSU by 5.5. So, like, all, all of these prediction models are like predict somewhere between every single one of them predict somewhere between WSU by four and a half or, or by five and a half or UW by four and a half. Like that is a nine point spread That's on nine. all of these models. That is really unusual, like super, super, super unusual. Um, so the, the models, when you aggregate them together um, is essentially predicting a coin flip. So um, yeah, it's, you know, it's going to be a close game. I was surprised that UW wasn't favored by more in the betting markets, but again, Vegas always knows. Um, I, I would have expected that number to be higher, um, something like pushing a touchdown, to be honest, um, especially given Washington's win over Oregon. But you know, again, Vegas knows. Vegas knows, and and this is this is a bit of a, a bit of a toss up by just about anybody's model at this point. Yeah. So, I guess. Um... Given that, I think we should probably get into our predictions here, which yeah. I just dread. I dread this for the Apple Cup. I, I yes. can't decide how I want to go here, which 
which would give the better juju. I don't know because that's all that fucking matters right now. Um, but yeah, Jeff, you go ahead and and you you uh, you go first. Okay, I am. Uh, so I, you know, pe- longtime listeners of the podcast or readers at Cook Center have known that I am. I have been the most pessimistic Apple Cup fan. Uh, that there is for the longest time. Um, I just was like, we're never going to win again, ever, ever, ever. And then, of course, last year happened, and now all of a sudden I'm thinking, you know, anything is possible, right? Uh, So I'm going to say, here's what I think. I think that touchdowns are actually going to be a bit hard to come by, just in general. I, I don't I don't see it being a high-scoring game. Um, I think, as you, you, know, as you mentioned, Washington's going to move the ball, uh, into the red zone, um, and they they are going to struggle to get in. Um, and then I think WSU is going to have to be you know opportunistic with um, it's going to have to be opportunistic with with its opportunities. I do think this is a game where we probably see multiple field goals on each side. Um, I think that teams are going to have a tough time punching it in. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Uh, WSU uh, thirty. WSU thirty. Washington 27. All right. Issue 30, Washington 27. Cougs retain the Apple Cup. Okay. Now, I think I'm not going to have both of us pick WSU. Last year, <laughs> last year I picked you dub. You know what? I'm going to pick you dub cuz I want a flood of fucking you're an idiot. Yes. I want I want yes. 11 I want 11 p.m. at night on on uh on Saturday. I just want my fucking Twitter mentions to be nothing but you're an idiot gifts. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say UW 31 WSU 24 and Jeff 100% uh, you're right, and I want all those fucking, <laughs> all those fucking gifts in my box, like yeah. in my in my notifications. Nothing but you're an idiot gifts on Saturday night. Um, so I'm 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 picking I'm picking uh, Utah because I I don't know. Like it makes me uncomfortable to have both of us pick Wazoo. So I'm yeah. just, I'm picking I'm picking Utah. I, I understand that. Thirty one twenty four. Um, I don't yeah. feel good about it. I hate it. Uh, but I got to do it. Uh, I yeah. think. Hey, man, it, you got to respect the football gods. Ryan exactly. Anderson will tell you exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. So, but you know what? In my heart, 63 nothing Cougs. Um, greatest day that yeah. has ever happened. Uh, but, yeah. So, um, I do also predict if UW wins, they will rush our field, even though they've been nothing but talking about how, whoa, oh, my God, last year. I can't believe they did that. Even though they've done it. Many times, I have personally seen them do this. Many times, yep. you have rushed yep. Pullman's field. You beat a Paul Wolf team in 2010, and you rushed the yep. field. Yep. Come on. I was there. Yep, I was at that one. So, yep, you're right. But yep. All right. So, uh, Apple Cup week. Uh, the stress has returned. Now that we yep. got that win last year, for there were so many losses in a row, there was just no stress around it anymore. I was just like, well, we're just yeah. going to get our ass kicked, so who cares? Of course. This is my – I realize, obviously, there hasn't been an Apple Cup in Pullman since 2018, so it's not going to be anyone. Uh, and no one will have watched an Apple Cup in Pullman for four years. And yeah. then uh, I personally didn't go to 2018. I was in Australia. Um, so I haven't been to an Apple Cup in Pullman and since 2016 um and before that it was 2008 so uh really only the second apple cup i've been to a pullman in, in the last uh you know, 14 years or whatever so very excited um very excited that we have the box where there won't be any husky fans because that's always the really annoying thing like i remember the 2016 apple cup you know you dubbed scoring a bunch at the start whatever and i I, I saw this guy in cougar gloves. And I see him clapping. I'm like, "What? What the hell, man?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm a husky fan." I'm like, "Why are yeah, you wearing I just cougar bought gloves?" The gloves at the, I bought just the bought gloves because my hands, hands were cold. cold. Like, fuck yeah. off! I would let my yeah. hands freeze. 
and fall yeah. off before, before I wore I'd a wear fucking pair of UW gloves. Like, get the yep. fuck out of here. Yeah, well, so, yeah. We know how. They're not the same as us. No. no, they're not. So, so, give us the win, football gods. Yeah. We deserve it. They, um, but, yeah. So, let's fucking do it. I'm excited. It's going to be a hell of a weekend. And we'll get into what else is going on that weekend. Um, let's take a break, and then we'll we'll talk about uh, hoops, we'll, or men's and women's, and we'll talk about volleyball um, on the other side of the break. back we're back um before we get into the other uh shit we were going to talk about jeff let's let's talk about what we are drinking to calm the nerves of this apple cup week uh so jeff what are you drinking so uh i made a, a pit stop by rainier growlers on my way home to pick up some beer and wouldn't you know it i found this beer by great notion called sports and this beer called Sports has some art on it, an illustration on it of a husky looking fellow in a purple shirt and a cougar looking fellow in a crimson colored shirt and a space needle in the background. I don't know why the space needles in the background since the game's not in Seattle, but I don't know. Maybe the artwork. I think they, anyway. Yes, they, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so I am drinking Sports, which is a, uh, sort of a very typical, uh, juicy, hazy IPA, um, lots and lots and lots of like fruit notes, almost kind of like, uh, like, uh, I don't know, guava, passion fruit, like that kind of flavor. So, uh, yeah. Jeff ascent, uh, Jeff's palate is ascending. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm trying to think like, I'm like, okay, this definitely tastes like fruit. What kind of fruit does it taste like? And I kind of went through some process of elimination. Like, I'm like, does it taste like grape? No, it doesn't taste like grapefruit. Does it taste like, oh, yeah, it kind of tastes like some of those, like, you know, fruity tropical fruits. Like, all right, so let's go with that. So, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's not great. Um, just be, And I think, like, maybe two, three years ago, I'd be like, this beer's great. But now I'm kind of like, eh. <laughs> I've had a million beers just like this one. Um, but it's good. Yeah, so they it's funny. They also do a version of that with a duck and a beaver. Yes, it's, um, I'm sure it's the same beer. I, I was looking. I I, 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 I I admittedly didn't look that hard. I looked at Beer Star. They didn't have the, the sports one because I wanted to get some of that too. But uh, there's also E9 does puppies versus kittens. Yes, puppies versus kittens. Um, yeah. so I think there you are drank that couple, last year for this, right? Yes, drank it on, on the bridge on the way to the yes. game. Yes. Um. Cheers to Corey and Marnie for bringing those for us to drink on the way to the game. Um, oh, yeah. So, but yeah, the, uh, uh, yeah, I, I love the Apple Cup themed beers. It, it's funny they make the same beer because you know they have breweries. Uh, they have breweries in Seattle now. They have breweries in Portland. Um, yep. They started in Portland, obviously, but um, great notion. Yeah, they make. I think uh, they make a lot of weird fucking shit, but I think their their IPA, their hazy IPAs are just fine. They're good. Yep. Um, I, I can't really do all their. I used to get excited about their weird shit, but I don't really do it. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't need a, a beer that smells exactly like blueberry muffins anymore. But if you haven't <laughs> had it, you should try. It. Yeah, that's, I, I would. I would. I would agree with that. Like, if you haven't had it, you should try it. It's fun. It's also way easier to get now. Like, I think they yes. just had it at Beer Star the other day and Double Stack. Like, I'm like the. These beers I used to like drive to Portland and they had like a two yeah. two crowler limit or whatever. Like Yeah, yeah. Now Oh, I yeah. remember I muled some back to you from uh yeah. from Portland one time. Yeah. No, it's those both of those beers. Like if you've never had them, they are great. Like the blueberry muffin and the double stack. Double stack tastes like essentially like uh maple syrup pancakes. Um yeah, both of those are outstanding. They're great beers. It's just like, you know, if if you've done it, you've you've done it. If if you haven't, you should. 
Yep. Uh, so I am drinking. Uh, well, as you know, Jeff, it was my my uh, oldest daughter's fifth birthday last week, mm. um, and then we had her a birthday party for her on Saturday, um, and that all went well. Uh, and so I'm drinking a, a beer that you know, I got, you know, in in honor of her. Um, from Kings and Daughters Brewery, which is a, a brewery in uh, uh, Portland that has some real, um, real nice, clean uh, uh, branding. With all of these white labels was real pretty. Uh, I'm sorry, it's Clackamas, which is a suburb of Portland. Um, so um, close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, the one thing I know about Clackamas is there's a mall there. I remember. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I know. Um, and so this beer is called B after B, uh, and it's got some, it's got some real nice label with some bees and, and some flowers and it is a, uh, New England pale ale comes in at a nice 4.8%. Um, it says they have some, uh, quote from a, a author, but I'm not going to read that. Um, so it's it's a collaboration with Track Brewing uh, out of Sonoma. They said they love the beers created by Track Brewing, in particular a 3% payload they do. At the end of our time in England, we visited Manchester to collaborate with Track. Or apparently, oh, okay, so this is, Track is a, no, it's, they're not out of Sonoma. Sonoma is their payload. They are out of Manchester, England. Fuck both those soccer teams. Uh, this time... <laughs> This Absolutely. time they came to they came to see us for another rewarding brewing experience. So they this is someone flew all the way, probably during hop selection. I imagine they probably came over for hop selection. And uh, what what uh, breweries will do that fly from far? They'll visit all the breweries in the area, do collaborations with them, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, it's got Citra Incognito, HBC five eighty six, YCH Mosaic, YCH that's Yakima Chief Hops. Um, Simcoe Cryo, so all all Yakima hops in there, love that. They just didn't even put any of their uh, Willamette Valley hops in there. Um, and then it's got some Columbia River George Wildflower Honey, which is probably in there for um, carbonation. So very tasty, just just a real nice, easy drinking, hazy pale ale, real easy drinking beer. Um, you know, uh, which is the does does not honor my five year old daughter in any way. Um, I think like. Uh, <laughs> Like it, like some sort of insanely sour um, beer with like uh, eight pounds of fruit in it would be more of a um, <laughs> more um, on the nose for her. Yeah, um, yeah, that like fizzed when you opened it, like it just sprayed all over you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love you, B. The best uh, best years of your life, buddy. Best years yeah. of your life, right here. Let me tell you. I love you as B. someone who hasn't had a five year old in quite a while. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's that's what we're drinking. I also got a, like a dark lager from Holy Mountain. I'm gonna open it in a sec. Um, Woo! Yeah, I saw that one. I saw that one at Rainier Growlers too. I don't remember what it's called. But the Dark Kingdom. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. It's a Polo t- Polo Mavi style dark lager. I don't even know what that means. Um, they could have made it. that up, and you wouldn't even. Um, it could just be like another way to but say But it sounds bad or something. I don't know. Very heavy metal. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Boo. Black. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> let's, let's talk about men's hoops here. Um, <sighs> Jesus. Thank, thank God we didn't record before they played another game. Cause that would have been bad. Oh, that would have just- been. That would have been a lot of doom and gloom. One one of the worst losses in program history. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe the worst, although so I did go back and look um at <clears throat> so Ken Palm only goes back so far, right? So like there's there's only so much you can do to get some historical context. But Ken Palm does go back uh you know, a little over 20 years. So that's pretty good. It's a pretty good data set at this point. Um, only three losses to teams that were sub 300 when uh, WSU played them. Uh, number one was uh, 
was in, I want to say, oh man, now, I'm, now I'm forgetting the years. But anyway, the year we lost to Utah when they were in the 300s and Ken Bone was the coach. 2012. Yep. So they were 336, I think, when that game was played. So that was bad. Um, they finished, I think, 302 or something like that. Um, so they, they were, and I, I mean, I distinctly remember that game really well. Um, they were, they were definitely getting better at that time, but it was also super, super duper embarrassing, um, to lose that game. So that was, that was fun. Uh, and then the other one, Ernie Kent had one that was, and I can't remember who it was. Um, he had one where the team was in the 300s, but they did not finish the end of the year in the 300s. They finished like 280 something. Um, so, but Ernie Kent also had a slew of losses to teams rated like 270, 280, and 290 yes. at the time of the game too. So it's not it's not like Ernie Kent somehow was a was a wizard at avoiding terrible losses and saying sub 300 is arbitrary and, and all of that. But the point is that the loss to Prairie View A&M definitely one of the worst, maybe the worst. I, I don't know, man. Even you, at least Utah was a. Power especially five team, an, especially uh, an eleven, an eleven point loss. Like, yes, they, they were they never were down by. They were down by in the like twenty two, I think, at one point. Um, you just, uh, I, I, they just weren't I, competitive. I, yeah, and, which is wild. And you, they came into this, you know, at the start of the game. They're so if you think about, so their their win probability at the start of that Utah game with that you were talking about in 2012 was uh, 91%. It was also 91% in this one. So they start 91%. It was right before halftime when it dipped below. Uh, well, it did briefly at the early in the first half, uh, dip below 50% win probability. But And then it they made a little bit of, I guess, I don't know, WC didn't even like, they hit like one shot at the start of the half. And, and uh, and it went up to they were over fifty percent, but like the rest of the way, it just they they made one little bit of run at the end, but it was so they were so far they were down by twenty one to start that run, so yeah. it just didn't yeah it just matter didn't like it was just and and in that game and in the BYU game we just saw like things that we were happy about in the first game just weren't there. Justin Powell was just invisible like he just yep. wasn't played like it was it was a better option to have dylan darling play um uh point guard and handling the ball because powell just wasn't being assertive in any way yep. you know and mullins was struggling turning the ball over a lot he wasn't shooting well mo was just he didn't he didn't have a field goal against a swack team yeah like yeah i it's bad. it's insane you know and they to a SWAC team giving up 46% on twos. You know, they shot 9 and 19 from three, but you could weather that if you shut down the paint and force some turnovers, but they didn't do that. Yep. And and so you're giving up 1.06 to a team like that. Even worse, only scoring 0.89. Like, yes. that That's the part where you're like, holy shit. Like, that's, that's – okay, so for, for listeners who haven't been with us for a long time, the frame of reference here is this, that 1.0 points per possession is roughly average, right? Get, give or take a little bit. Like it could be, and it's actually usually like, like give a little bit. It's usually more like 1.03 or 1.04 yeah. is actually average, but whatever. It's, you know, the 1.0 is a nice round number. To, to score 0. 0.89 points per <laughs> possession against uh, a team ranked in the 300s uh, is just like, it's 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 sort of it's mind blowing stuff, um, and and there were lots of reasons why. Like they just were, um, they were tentative. the The offense was slow. It was, the decisions were slow. It was uh, they weren't very aggressive. Um, they did not crash the offensive glass the way that we've gotten used to over the last couple of years with with Cal Smith teams. Uh, they turned the ball over a ton. Like it just it it just looked like it, it was wild because. Uh, you know, when we recorded the first, the, the podcast after the first game, we were just like, oh, yeah, man, this fucking team, like <laughs> the way they pass and what they do, like, this is going to be amazing. And then, like, I mean, 
Boise State and then this game. And, you know, in Boise State, to be honest, probably isn't very good either. Like, I, like I was kind of like, oh, yeah, Boise State will probably be fine. You know, it's a team that was in the tournament last year. They were good. Um, they, they haven't really looked good since either. Well, they, they, did, they did beat Colorado on, on Sunday. Okay, I didn't see that one. I, I watched them lose. Yeah. I watched them lose to somebody and in they, that same tournament. Uh, Charlotte. But they, they spanked, yeah, Charlotte. They spanked Loyola Chicago and they spanked okay. Colorado. So maybe Okay, then that's probably okay. maybe maybe Charlotte's better than better than I realized. So anyway, just kind of the point was, really, you know, those last two maybe not, I don't know. But those last two games, it's just like it just like you I don't even know how those were the same teams. It, it was wild. Like they just you know, they, they faced a Boise State team that, let, you know, let's be really, really clear, is super well coached, um, especially defensively. They're very sound. Um, they shrink the floor. They're just like, man, they really, really, really make you work. And, you know, Bryce kind of predicted this in his preview that, um, you know, that, that it was going to be interesting to watch what Powell did because the way that Texas State defended, uh, you know, the pick and roll ball, ball screen actions was really different than what Boise State was going to do. Boise State was going to do drop defense, which is where, you know, the big kind of drops toward the rim and make basically makes you, you know, either shoot over him or or give up the ball. And, you know, Powell, more often than not, just gave up the ball. And, um, you know, so they really, really struggled to deal with that. And then it sort of looked like, you know, again, we never really know what guys are thinking, pop psychology, whatever. It it sure looked like they did not take the game quite as uh, seriously as was necessary. Which you know, honestly, they were going, yeah. they were going on the road. That team, I mean, this is their the biggest game they'll probably play all season, unless they make it to their conference championship game, which which they might. Um, but it's like you know, you knew they were going to be up. We were not up from the very tip. It was obvious we were not up. Uh, Prairie View made a lot of shots that they probably won't normally make, but you know that does happen from time to time in basketball. And we just never, we never met, we just never met their intensity, um, and it showed. And then you know, at some point, you also start to have a little bit of a crisis of confidence, right? And you know, I think I think their confidence was shaken against Boise State. I think they thought they were gonna, you know, maybe just kind of show up and and walk over this you know SWAC team that you know is not very good and. Um, and when it didn't turn into a walkover, then all of a sudden you start sort of questioning and second guessing. And um, some of the better yeah. players were, were, were bad. I mean, Mo was bad and Powell faded into the background and Mullins was terrible. And it's, it's, <laughs> you know, when, when 60% of your starting lineup is horrendous, like that is, and then you're playing without DJ Rodman. That was the other piece. And again, you know, normally you wouldn't make injury excuses against a SWAC team, but you're already down Yakimovsky and you're, also down for the season, Jackson and Rice. And, you know, until yep. this team and sort also, of figures it out, that's part of the deal. If, if there's any guy on the roster that's going to take any, like, any, regardless of opponent, it's going to take them seriously. It's, it's, uh, it, it is, uh, DJ. Like, he, he's going to, yep. he's going to, he's going to fight regardless. And yep. so, yeah. And, yeah, there was this kind of this feeling, like, why does you know you you got to think like a little bit like why do we have to travel to this like this is not something we normally have to do and this seems to have permeated the conference because WSU is one of four teams that has lost to SWAC teams. Yep, and which is wild, <laughs> which it probably is around the total number of times a SWAC team has beaten a Pac-12 team ever. Honestly, like Might WSU be. WSU plays SWAC teams every year. They have them in Pullman usually beat them by a lot and and so do most Pac-12 teams but yeah, you've as got, these teams and they're always playing like six seven road games in a row right because they're just on this like money-making tour you know yeah going to all these schools they usually you know they go to Gonzaga they go to Washington they go to Washington State they go to like Boise State, State and they just yeah. yeah and they and they just you know pick up paychecks along the way and um, you know, they're tired and beat down by the time they play us. Like, you know, playing at their home gym, I, I, I probably felt pretty good, I would imagine. So, I don't know. It, it was good that they rebounded. So, all you know, we, t- we talk all about that terrible game. But they rebounded tonight against 
uh, against Eastern Washington. That yeah. made me feel quite a bit better. It looks like I they think, maybe reset a little bit with a week off. I think it even um, like I, all around. There's some really good. Like obviously they they hit a ton of threes, which you yep. can kind of use as like an explanation. But you know they still win this game going away if they hit 35 percent from three or whatever. You know. Yes. Um, what what really impressed me obviously it was nice to see Jabe come back. He was red white hot, eight of eleven from three. Hitting some really difficult threes, uh, Powell. Yeah. Powell still, I'd still like him to be more assertive. Honestly, I know his like, possess still only sixteen percent and possession and usage. Four of eight from three. He he hit some tough shots too. It's like I know you could do. I know you got more in you, man. Yeah, I know. He, but he, he had seven assists, more like what seven we were rebounds. hoping for. Uh, seven rebounds. Mullins had seven boards. Um. You know, the, the team overall, six turnovers, less than 10% turnover rate. That's that's a huge thing. Another huge, defensively, uh, Eastern, 38% on twos. That is yes. something I like we to see. That. Like, that is what we I've been worried about, their performance in t- interior defense to start the year. Now, that may have come a little bit at a sacrifice of offensive rebounding. Um, Eastern definitely had some some kind of bouts like from some like there would be like a few minutes when they would just get real good at yep. the offensive glass and I I don't know maybe yep. we were gambling for blocks or something but uh but yeah it was all around just it's nice to see them come back and just totally pace someone especially someone that beat them last year uh you know still Venters got his uh but it didn't really matter because Jabe and and Powell were hitting a bunch of threes. Um, you know, Mo kind of did what you hope he would do against a team like that. You yep. know, he got a lot of easy buckets inside. Uh, he was crashing in the offensive glass. Uh, he blocked some shots, you know, it's yep. still, you know, it, it, so that was nice. his passing out of the post. Yes. Very impressive. He had yeah, three, assists, three assists and they were all yeah. impressive passes. And there was, yep. he even passed out and created the, there was some like hockey assists he had out yep. of the post as well. Uh, well Dylan this, was, this was his best game. This was Mo's best game of the year. Um, I know he didn't score as many points he did in the first game, but the first game he was sort of like the – I mean, obviously he's got to himself, get himself in position to do this, but it was a lot of catch and dunk, right, or a lot of catch and layup. Um, this one he he showed – I was really impressed with what he did tonight. He showed some – some varied uh, ways to attack the basket. Um, there were a couple times where he maybe got a little out of his element. Like I think you and I both noticed one where, you know, he took about 30 dribbles trying to back a guy down. And like, that from was like, from like 16 it's, feet. It's like, yes. dude, give it up, give it up. No, it's not happening. no, that's, that's not, that's not his wheelhouse, but there were some other times where he, you know, where he faced up and, you know, put the ball on the floor with a couple of moves. Um, there was another time where, you know, a nice little spin move into the lane and rose up for a little, you know, four or five foot um, jump hook and and put that one in. And you know, he had an and one on a nice little, nice little roll. Um, I think Powell got it to him and he sealed the guy off and you know got him up in the air and then and then got the and one. And then you know, one that I'm thinking of that that's sort of similar to what you mentioned that the hockey assist was. Um, you know, there was one where where he got it in the post and you know, drew, drew some attention and kicked it out. And then that ball got swung one more time for a wide open three. And, and so, yeah, he was, he was really, really good. It was really, really cool to see him, um, to see him like just bounce back in that way. Cause you always kind of like think, you know, man, do you, <laughs> you know, had two really awful games. Um, he basically got benched at the end of the game against Prairie View A&M, um, to see him bounce back in that way was really great. And then, you know, you mentioned Mullins too. Like, so his, uh, possession percentage was was 22 um scored 24 points on 15 shots which is really 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 damn good um, hit eight but it's of 11 threes yes but it's like the fact that he was willing to take 11 threes um i i think is actually a really positive sign after prairie view a and I'm, I'm looking and i'm going like you know we we got two starting guards who are both at about 15 percent usage like you you just can't do that like you can't you can't have two guys do contributing so little to your offense. One of like, them has to be a scoring possible. guard. Like yes, one of your somebody's guards has got to, to be score. a scoring guard. Like, it can't just be Bamba. You know, somebody's got to shoot. And 
So to see him, it's got to be, you know, that's where with Powell, it's like, yeah, I think there's probably a little more meat on the bone there. But, you know, on a, in a game where Mullins is doing this, you know, yeah, like that's OK. You've got a one guard at 22 percent, one guard at 16 percent. And, you know, the guard who was at 22 percent had a had a you know historic shooting game. And, and so you just, you know, you feel OK about that. And Gay was at 28 percent. And, you know, you, you love to see that, um, you know, just there were there were a lot of really good exciting developments in this one and look i know eastern is bad and i think i think there's a chance that eastern's actually worse than prairie view <laughs> you know based on what i watch and, and i think there's actually a reasonable chance prairie view is better than, than what we got i don't know what they've done since but i think they play uh, they narrowly lost yesterday. to tennessee mart they narrowly lost to tennessee okay. mart at home okay all right I so, mean, on the road sorry they don't play another yeah. home game until conference play until conference play so anyway, I just I think that there's a pretty good chance that Eastern's worse. But, you know, again, you know, we were never competitive against Prairie View. And so to come out and play so well and so hard, um, you know, is th- there were still breakdowns. There were still breakdowns. I mean, there was one where, you know, Mo had a had a an easy score or something or maybe he had a miss on a bunny or something. And then he was just kind of late getting back down the floor and Eastern gets a, a backdoor for for a layup like and you're just like. You know, and Moe's like, you know, four feet kind of jogging four feet behind the play. So, you know, I mean, there there was still some of that kind of stuff, but it was it was definitely a positive step. And at this point in the season, you know, that's that's what you want to see is you want to see positive steps, especially when you're like, OK, if we're going to try and do this tournament thing, like we can't lose. You can't lose another one. You got to be able to point to that one and go, yeah, that was just some really strange, weird, bad night. And so mission accomplished night. Yeah, one one thing, the, the only one bummer is uh, Dylan Darling got the star, which I think he had earned, and um, yeah. just did, didn't have a real good game. Picked up a lot of no. fouls. Didn't, didn't yep. only took one shot and missed it. I really two shots, was down. two shots, two shots. Yeah, one, but he had he had think, a two that he missed it, and a three. That missed. Yeah, I think the two got blocked maybe, and then the uh, the three hit. It was an open three he missed, which sucks. You know, being back in Spokane and and all that yep. bummer for him, but. But yeah, I think uh, potential. We're, we're actually going to see Dylan play a lot more than we expected. I think so. Yeah. Um, and he obviously he didn't have a good game tonight, but I think there's something there. And I, I think, he, especially defensively, which is a surprise for me. Um, yep. I, I think he he actually has some real uh, potential, like as as Bryce calls it, point of attack defensive capabilities. So I think yep. that might get him in the game. Often, especially given you know some of the other guards maybe haven't shown that ability yeah. as much um, and he's yeah, just they, he's just a bulldog too like he yeah. he is he is unafraid and like his toughness is you, you can just he like just kind of oozes that toughness which not a shock given who his dad is um you know you just kind of he's got that little bit of that mentality and you know it's i think he's you're gonna see him we're gonna see him more yeah um, so yeah, it's, it's yeah, nice to talk about a win. Um, what, let's briefly talk about what is, what is that Prairie Review A&M loss? How does that impact any sort of postseason hopes? Yeah, it's bad. It's super bad. It's yeah. terrible. I, you know, I, I, it's not a killer, but it's also like, I mean, you can't, you can't have another one, you know, and then you've got to. They're going to have to counterbalance it with with some good wins. Like they're going to have to beat uh, somebody like Baylor or you know beat UCLA or Arizona. Well, UCLA, I don't know if UCLA is going to counteract it at this point. I guess we'll see. But um, yeah, this you know this or um, Oregon on the road feels a lot bigger now. Like it's, yep. Now the nice yep. thing about the Eastern In Oregon game, it kind, of, kind of showed maybe, out against Houston, but yeah, yeah, you know didn't win that game. Like you know Oregon's beatable or should be beatable. So, you know, and you're just not, again, we're back in this spot where the Pac-12 is looking <laughs> and like, maybe you're not going to get a lot of help. And so, you know, you're going to have to seize the opportunities you've got. You play UCLA twice, you play Arizona twice, you play Baylor, um, you know, somewhere in there, you got to, you got to pick up a big win to, to show the committee that, you know, win or two to show the committee that, you know, that one that loss was, was you can just blame it on injuries. You can go, okay, well, and the committee does go for that. Like, you yeah. can be like, well, you know, we were missing our top two power forwards. Like, 
you know, and especially if Yakimovsky comes back and that sort of transforms what we do a little bit, um, you know, that, that's the sort of thing that you can make some inroads with the committee, but you know, again, you, you can't lose to, can't lose the Eastern, which we didn't can't lose the Detroit mercy, which is on Friday. Um, you know, those are games you need to win. And then, like you said, you know, the Oregon games looking, look, looking pretty good sized at this point, looking pretty good sized. Yeah. And so, yeah, Detroit mercy on Friday should be a decent crowd. Cause it's the day before the Apple cup. I'll be there. And I know a lot of people that'll be there. Woo. So, uh, um, so it should be, a, you know, a few thousand at least people in the crowd, which is big for a WSU uh, non-conference game against Detroit Mercy. So hopefully they can feed off some of that energy, have another big performance, uh, keep that confidence up, and then they'll have a, a, a almost a week off before they play Oregon and then Utah, you know, those early season Pac-12 games. Um, so, yeah, big, big, big stretch of games coming up for them. This is uh, – it's it's uh, it doesn't get any easier, um, so uh, this will be interesting to watch. So yeah, uh, the women's team um, they went up to they went out to uh, Hawaii and played BYU, uh, who beat them last year, and then again beat them this year. Um, uh, so that was a tough one. BYU seems to have their number uh, because really. Uh, the offense has been playing pretty well, and BYU shut them down. But then they came back against Troy today and put up 87, including I think they had 52 in the first half. Um, so, you know, they're 5-1. Uh, I don't think – I don't know how good BYU is. They were really good last year. Um, I don't know how good they are this year. I don't know if that's going to be a bad loss or not. Uh, but – to be five and one right now, good. Um, and then they have uh, uh, a couple home games. They actually play UW um, on December 11th uh, at Washington. So really, a lot of us should go to that game and make sure there is yeah. lots of WSU support on December 11th, Sunday at 2 p.m. Maybe um, we should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, make sure there's lots of support uh, for the Cougs there, uh, but yeah. So they they um they yeah they they have some. I, I this is it's good to see them. They've mostly won the games they should have. Probably would have liked to beat Brigham Young, uh, but you know they have South Dakota State, Montana, Portland, and Washington coming up. Uh, a lot of uh, more time, chances to rack up some wins, um, and really they they've looked. Every bit of again uh, a tournament team. I don't that they don't. Yep. They don't seem to have regressed. Actually, I think I think Bella is better than last year. I think Charlize is better than last year. Yep. Um, we talked about Tahina coming in. The element she brings, um, you know, and then you still have Yo who plays defense and can hit threes and, and just can pop up a big scoring games. Um, you know, Tara seem Tara Wallet seems better than last year. So I, I think there's a very good chance that they actually can have improved off of last season um, and even be a, a you know, they, they'll never, they, they're still not a deep team, but still there's, they have some, uh, you know, they, there's just having Tahina off the bench as a reserve guard is, is really helpful. I mean, yep. she had, she had 14 and uh, 14. Well, and that was something, that was something they were really missing was someone to come off the bench and be a, you know, backup point guard, ball handler, like, you know, they relied way too much on Crystal last year. Um, and then the year before, right, they, they had a backup point guard who then, you know, left the team and yeah. disappeared. And that really that really kind of changed what they were able to do offensively. So to have someone competent coming off the bench to um, to pick up those ball handling duties has, has really seemed to make a pretty big difference because they really yeah. missed that the last couple of years. Absolutely. So we'll we'll keep an eye on them. And again, December eleventh. If you don't have anything to do, uh, let's let's go watch them beat UW Dub and, and uh, dance dance on their yeah. super purple seats. I, um, I might not have anything to do that day, Craig. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I know Marnie is already uh, getting uh, getting us together to go. So you want okay. to get in on that? I, um, I, I probably do. Maybe maybe yeah. the family wants to get in on that. 
Yeah, See? just just have a, a crowd. Um, yeah. Amanda, Amanda, no desire. Uh, no. <laughs> um, uh, so she may, I may take B, and then Amanda will do something with uh, GG. So, um, and while well, I take okay. the game, because B knows right. that that's the bad place. I took her last year and made place. her aware that this is the bad place, and so she calls it now the bad place. It's good. <laughs> um, that's excellent parenting right there. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, switching to volleyball, once again, uh, just cruising through the weekend, destroying teams they need to destroy. Um, but honestly, uh, you know, Colorado, not a bad team. They swept them. Um, so very impressive. Uh, and then they came, they lost one set, uh, again, so one set on the weekend. Um, and they... And they get like, man, I click on the click on the volleyball uh, page, and they got they got their like own custom build here. This is wild. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Uh, for the UCLA coming up, that's that's cool. I haven't seen that. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, so yeah, they they beat. Um, let's see this weekend. So yeah, Colorado. That was the tougher one of the two. They they cruised past Utah. They did lose one match to Colorado, but took care of business against them. Uh, now they're sitting in third place in the conference. Um, That's so awesome. Which is very impressive. And two huge, huge matches um, uh, against kind of two teams below them in, in, the, in the conference. Now, UW uh, swept them uh, at UW. And it was a real bad match. Um, but UW hasn't been quite uh, as good since then. I believe they're 11 and 7 in conference. They're sitting about 6. Uh, uh, and then uh, UCLA, I'm trying to remember what um, they did against UCLA the first time this uh, schedule was a little harder to track down. Um, UCLA, have they not? They, so this is the only time they play UCLA. Uh, so that's on. That's going to be today when you listen to this. And then the big get, big matchup, UW, the night before the Football Apple Cup, 6 p.m. in Bowler. Uh, I already bought advance tickets. Heads up, if you buy more than 10, they're only $3. So if you know 10 people that are going want to go to that game, they're only $3 for the tickets each if you buy more than 10. Um, and then they are uh, seven dollars a piece if you only buy less than ten. So Ooh. just say it. You can get ten for thirty bucks, which you can only get four for twenty eight bucks. So, uh, you know, it. I, I immediately texted. I got we got like multiple groups of ten. They're going. So we're gonna be we're gonna be right behind the bench. Uh, the nice pack of like twenty plus people. Um. And I, I hope, you know, I, I have a feeling there'll be a, that'll be a nice packed gym. Uh, probably some UW fans as well. Um, but it should be a great atmosphere. Huge game. Um, if WSU can sweep this weekend, you know, they're putting pressure on the, the selection committee to give them, some, give them a, a host site. Because um, they're, the way they've been playing down the stretch has to, you know, has to mean something. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. They've won uh, what six of their last seven matches. Only lost at number sixteen Oregon, who they beat earlier in the season. Yep. Um, so yeah, if they could take down UCLA uh, and then set up a big match, a revenge match with UW, uh, that could be a super fun. So I encourage you to, if you're going to Pullman, you can be there on Friday night uh, by six p.m. Let's let's root on that volleyball team and. And, and get the first Apple Cup win out of the weekend out of there. Heck yeah. All right. So, wow, look at us. Look at us. Um, after last week, um, just breezing through it. Uh, and by the way, <laughs> if you thought that last week's uh, um, uh, podcast was long. Uh, I know where you're about- going with this. There was about what fifteen minutes cut out of it because of technical it was about difficulties. About 20, 20 minutes. 
so of it was, men's basketball talk where we had technical difficulties and it was uh it was okay because it was okay it was the best time for them yeah by the time we got it sorted out they had lost a prairie view and it was like well maybe we should just cut all that out yeah so it was uh well over two hours in the end uh you you wouldn't have wanted to hear about that anyway so no it's fine yeah, you would have loved to hear about, uh, about us telling you how we should be Prairie View after we didn't be Prairie View. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you uh, like this, which if you listen to an hour and 20 minutes, come on, you do. Uh, rate us five stars. Give us a subscribe, whatever your yes, ser- preferred service is, especially on Apple. Even if you don't listen on Apple, just go rate us five stars. And subscribe on Apple. I don't. I don't know. If you don't have an Apple phone, yeah, I think you can do it somehow. I don't know. Um, uh, but yeah, if you um, it, it, if you want to follow us on social, Twitter still going at the Craig Powers for me um, at news at news way back in the day. <laughs> I actually do own that handle. Still. Yeah, but it's just maybe none I'll of the tweets are there and, and none of the maybe, followers. Maybe I'll are, the use followers it again. are the followers still there? The followers are not still there. Oh. I deleted it at one point. So, but I went ahead and well, reclaimed it so that I could you know, protect the brand. Yeah. Well, at pod versus everyone for Jeff. Um, on Instagram, I'm at Craig W. Powers and TikTok the same. And Jeff is at NewsCoog on Instagram. Maybe we'll uh, you know, be taking advantage of like stories or something if Twitter goes away or it just gets super annoying because of the people that are letting back on it um uh yeah uh definitely no mastodon i'm not ever gonna figure that out uh the learning curve is too steep yes um, i'm too old for yeah that shit. yep we're not doing that uh but yeah uh i guess jeff look at us uh tidy um and i guess all that's left to say is Go Cougs and fuck the Huskies. Go Cougs, Craig. Fuck the Huskies. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. You can still get the jab. You can still get jab. I've done it four you. times. Four times. Me too. Look at me. I'm still here. You're still, still here. here.